Hello and welcome back to the School Heed YouTube channel and welcome to match day number 20. I had to look then, Jesus. These games are coming thick and fast and it is the Sunderland. We are away to Sunderland, Liverpool versus Sunderland and obviously I missed doing the Manchester City one because everything was rather hectic as it was coming towards the end of the year and everything. I just didn't have time to actually get a, a preview out of that one. But let's review that one right now very, very quickly. Man, Man City came up against Liverpool and we won 1-0. Liverpool put in a pretty good performance in that one. By no means a pretty performance, by no means one of those performances that you're going to remember forever and ever and ever or anything like that. Early goal by Genie Wijnaldum. Nice, unbelievable ball by Adam Lallana, and it was unreal. It was absolutely unbelievable. Nice floated ball over to Lallana. Can't remember who crossed it. It might have been Firmino. Lallana cuts in a little bit. He's just dribbling a little bit. Defender doesn't put too much pressure on, and he just loops one over. Genie Wijnaldum leaves the defender who it was. I can't even remember who it was at the time. But Genie Wijnaldum just leaps up and headers it. Bullet header. Had a bit of a curl on it as well, and got past Claudio Bravo, who serious questions must be now be asked of Claudio Bravo, and the decision to actually bring him in, aside from having Joe Hart prove himself, never mind the fact that Joe Hart has pre been a pretty good goalkeeper for Manchester City, and at times, when he's on form, he can keep Man City in games, it's unbelievable, he's a younger goalkeeper, Claudio Bravo, I think he's 33, 34, something like that, and just does not seem comfortable on the like having the ball thrown at him or anything like that. You know, he wants him there so he can distribute with his feet. But even then, his distribution isn't that good either. It just seemed that when it got to Claudio Bravo, that they're, they're having the same sort of issues that aren't being highlighted. Whereas when we had them in with Carrius, they were being blown all out of proportion in the media. So it's one of those. But anyway, the rest of the game, we fought and fought and fought and we fought hard. The thing with Manchester City seemed like... I can't really say if they were tired or not. They just looked really lethargic. They didn't look like they were very up for the game. Yaya Torre wasn't as commanding in that midfield as he can be and how he needs to be if he wants to stay in that team. But he's pretty much a shoe in for that midfield spot now with Ilkay Gundogan out injured for however long he's going to be injured for. So it's, it's vital for Manchester City that Yaya Torre and the rest of the team pick up as well. Sterling had a tough night against Milner. Milner played excellently. The defence were absolutely brilliant. I thought Mignolet... Now, Mignolet had... I had my heart in my mouth at one point when he, <laughs> when Mignolet decides to come out and Sergio Aguero's inbound and he just dinks it over Aguero's head with his foot. And I'm like, if that doesn't come off, that's all over the papers the next day. But he pulled it off and I'm quite happy for that. But... It was a heart-in-mouth moment, but aside from that, there weren't a great deal of threats. And speaking of Aguero as well, Aguero did not put in a very good performance either. He's, he's a constant threat. Sometimes you know he's going to be a danger man if he gets inside the box. The problem with Aguero in this game was, I think the statistic was he had zero, zero touches in our box at all. He didn't have any. So, I mean, what does that say, A, about our organisation our defence that people have criticised all season, and I've been one of them. You know, we haven't. You know, we haven't been the best at keeping clean sheets. We all know that. But hey, we managed to keep out what is probably, I'd say, at this moment in time, the second most dangerous uh, Premier League striker at the moment because Diego Costa's banging them in. That's just how it is at the moment. I'm not preferring one to the other. That's just what the stats are giving us, and you see where Chelsea are right now. You see where, you know, Man City are. They rely on Aguero. It might have been a match where they may have actually utilised Ian Acho. I maybe would have gone with that one because he's coming off a suspension. People are thinking he's going to be raring to go. He's going to be like a tiger out of a cage. And instead, he was like a kitten just getting ready for a nap. It just wasn't a very good performance from them. So we get the 1-0 victory and it keeps us within six points of Chelsea. Now, this then comes on to the Sunderland game. Sunderland versus Liverpool. And Sunderland, let's look at their form recently. Two wins, four losses in their last six games. And to, you know, you can take a 3-1 at Manchester United. Getting beat by 3-1 when you're Sunderland. Getting beat by Man United by that scoreline. You're going to kind of expect it. Especially Man United are picking up a good deal of form at the moment. They're really in quite a good vein. Their players and their star players are starting to come through. Mkhitaryan's doing well. Pogba's doing well. Ibrahimovic is banging them in left, right and centre. He can't stop scoring goals. I think if he tried not to score a goal, he'd probably score one anyway. That's the kind of form he's on at the moment. But to go down in the style that they did against Burnley, and credit to Andre Gray, because he's come up into this division... 
And he's had some games, you know, he's obviously had that ban with all those, you know, those offensive tweets and stuff like that. But he is clearly one of those strikers that, if on his day, will put them away. And he scored Burnley's first ever hat-trick in Premier League football, I believe it is. To come away from that game, 4-1 losers, and you know the situation that you're in. It's got to be, like... I know Sunderland have a history of being able to get themselves out. They bring in a manager and they get themselves out the crap every single year. But there has to come a time where it's just like, you know what? You are you are probably going to have to go down to have anything change. You're going to have to have maybe, and they won't like being compared to Newcastle, obviously Sunderland, Newcastle, but you're going to maybe have to have a Sunderland, uh, a Newcastle situation where you go down or you get near to going down, where it's almost pretty much inescapable for something to change at that club. You can't... How do the fans... And this is a genuine question. Any Sunderland fans that happen to watch this or whatever, any Sunderland fans, what is it? Like, how do you look at every season when you come in to the season? You know a season's coming in, you've just survived relegation for however many times you've been surviving it now. How do you then come up into the season and you look at, say, some summer signings that are maybe a bit like, hmm, a bit questionable, not necessarily, you know, Premier League quality. And I know that anybody could be Premier League quality on their given day. Coming in, you might find a gem from out of nowhere. But the signings that have come in, you're still relying on Jermaine Defoe, 32, 33. Aside from that, who else is, who else is there? There's no one really... Jermaine Defoe will always bang you a goal in. He got a goal in the Burnley loss. He will always bang you a goal in. He's actually, sad to say, he's too good for Sunderland. He is, he's got far too much in-the-box quality. If, if, you get, it's like, if you get Jermaine Defoe in the box, he's pretty much guaranteed to score a goal. Unless goalkeeper put, pulls out a worldie or whatever. He rounds a goalkeeper, whatever. Jermaine Defoe will pretty much always score you a goal. It's pretty much guaranteed. So, without him, Sunderland would probably be, would probably be dead and buried this season already. With him, they've always got a chance. But with David Moyes, I'm not entirely sure. He hasn't had the best record since leaving Everton. If he's given time, possibly yes. And if they survive and stay in the Premier League, then maybe yes. He can start bringing in some signings. But bringing in the likes of Pienaar, he maybe thought, oh, he's going to bring in a familiar face. Slips on the ball and gives gives away one of the one of the, one of the goals that Andre Gray got. It might have been his hat-trick goal, actually. It's not looking good for Sunderland. For Liverpool, on the other hand, Jurgen Klopp's come out and said he's obviously been a big critic of the um, the Christmas fixture pile-up and everything like that. But since then, he come out and he said, we have absolutely no excuses. We are going to have to go out there and we are going to have to deliver. And he's actually said, we will deliver. So that gives us a very good idea of where our mentality is right now. We want to perform and we need to perform. Now, we've got a question over Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson looks like he's got a heel injury, different heel to the one that he dealt with in the past. But even so, I think he's got enough options and he showed that in the um, in the game we had against Man City where he changed things up, where things were maybe... When he had to bring Henderson off and he brought Origi on and changed the formation and where people were playing, it was it was a very good stroke because it was a good stroke of man management and team management and game management, which is one thing that Klopp was criticised for earlier on in the season. He he came on, Origi comes on, Lalana and Firmino and such switch around positions and things like that. And for some reason, Origi comes on, he's got loads of energy, and it just starts to, again, give us more on the front foot. Because when Henderson went off for maybe the first 10 minutes or so, Man City was starting to build as if they were going to, you know, maybe get a bit more possession, get into those danger areas. But as soon as we settled again, it was pretty much Liverpool's game and it looked like we could have gone on to get the second as well. We shut out the game and we did very well doing that. There's so many options in there. Obviously, if Henderson isn't going to be fit, obviously Coutinho isn't going to be fit for this one and neither is Matip. I think he's ruled those out already. So there's three big misses that could be coming back in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. That would be quite nice. I don't see any change to the back four, you know, unless there's injuries. So that would mean I'm going for, including the goalkeeper, Mignolet, because Mignolet put in a very good performance. Milner, unbelievable performance. He looks like he's a natural left back and he's only just played it this year. As far as I'm aware, I might be wrong. He might have done it in the past. Um, uh, Clavin and Lovren, no, no question. No question. Because they're doing very well as a partnership right now. Clean sheets pretty much every time they've played, apart from against Stoke. Then you've got Klein, who does a very understated job. He sometimes gets a bit of flack in the media for not doing, like, 
you know, he's not like bursting down the channels and stuff like that. Like maybe you'll get like a Hector Bellerin will do or like a Kyle Walker or something like that. But at the end of the day, he's putting in a defensive performance because he's actually a defender. You know, it's just so happens that he's got quite a lot of pace and a good delivery that if he whips one in the box, he's probably going to find someone. It's very good that he's staying back and staying disciplined. And it's very good for us as well. Building forward into that midfield. Henderson, I'm going to go with Henderson being missing in this one. I don't think Klopp's one of those who's going to take risks of having someone out longer than they should be. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, who's he going to put in? For me, no question, Emre Chan and Wijnaldum. I think that they would be a good solid base for then having Lalana in front of that. And then the front lot, I think you would obviously have... You've got to have Sadio Mane. This is going to be his last game before he goes off to the Afri African Cup of Nations. And I think he's going to be a big miss as well. I think he's going to be a bigger miss than we think. But again, I can somehow see that there's probably going to be a plan for when he's not there. So fingers crossed. It's all good. And it also depends how far he goes in that tournament. He Apparently, the date I saw is that he might not even be back until the 12th of February. So we're going to be missing him for a good five weeks. So we're going to have to learn to adjust anyway. So Sadio Mane, um, Firmino, and for me, Origi or Sturridge. Origi or Sturridge. I'm not entirely sure. I can't choose between the two, and I'm not going to. But I think either of those would be a good option. And I think that's a very good squad for us. And I think, after the performances that we've put in recently, we've got four wins in a row. 3-0 against Borough. 1-0 against Everton. 4-1 against Stoke. And a 1-0 against Man City. Different calibres of teams, from Middlesbrough to Everton to Stoke to Man City. Different calibres, different places in the table, but we pulled out different performances that were necessary. This cannot be a very, you know, I can't imagine many Sunderland fans are going to be looking forward to coming up against us right now. And on that basis, I am going to go, I'm going to go for a Liverpool victory, and I'm not discrediting Sunderland. I know I predict Liverpool to predict, to win a lot of our games. However, this one for me just seems... At this moment in time, Sunderland do not look like they're turning things around. They don't look like when Everton came to us and they'd just beaten Arsenal. They didn't look. They don't look like that. They look like they're steadily going a little bit further down, I'm afraid. And for that purpose, I'm going to go for a 2-0 victory. Now, some people might think that that's quite conservative, but I think with the way that we're playing, we're maybe not going to blast teams away. We could. We could come out and do like what we did against uh, the likes of Watford and Hull. But I think it's going to be a 2-0 victory. I think we're going to get maybe an early goal and one in the second half. And then we'll close out the game quite comfortably. But I do think it's going to be a 2-0 victory to Liverpool. Let me know what you think. What are your team selections? Are you going to, would you maybe use someone different? Maybe some of the youth players? Because I do see maybe some of the youth players being on the bench at least. Maybe they might make an appearance. Especially if things are a little bit comfortable. You might see a couple of them come on later on in the game. Maybe 70 minutes or something like that. And get a good 20 minutes run out. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Sunderland fans, as I said before, how are you feeling about this game and what is your prediction? How do you think it's going to go? It'd be very nice to hear from any of you. If you can get in the comments, that'd be absolutely awesome. If you've liked the video, please drop a like on it. That would be so awesome. As we've entered the new year and we're obviously now in the transfer window for January, I will be doing a review video of um, what my old video that I did, which should be... About here, I think, should be over here, should be around that area anyway, on this on this video here, um, of where my um, my predictions were for the table at the start of the season, or I think it was a couple of games in we did it, and I did the table prediction, and I will be doing another one, but if you want to check out that video, please feel free to check it out, that'd be absolutely awesome, drop a like on that one as well, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you later, thank you ever so much for watching.